Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we've got an exciting day. Artak Chase is coming through, picking up my Artak after seven days. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe. We do Raid Shadow Legends videos every day. And today we're going to be doing like a decent showcase of Artak. And I'd imagine for the next couple of days, I'll be pumping out some different ways you can play with this dude. I'm going to be picking him up on my main and my free to play. So I'm going to show you some builds with both. Um, but damn, you pick him up. Also picking them up through Clan B Clan, 30,000 points in the bag. So uh, make sure you nudge your clan and be like, dudes, get involved. We need your points. But there you go. He's on the account. Cool thing about my main account is anyone new, I've got the resources just to throw him straight up. Whereas on my free to play, it's way more of a grind to get people up. Main account, we're just like that. Yeah, I've got the stuff. Stuff is sitting around and we just take him up. Cheeky little barrel, why not? Up to 60. Hopefully, I've got all my ascension pots. Spacebar trick. Oh, damn, didn't work. <laughs> Spacebar trick failed me. Spacebar trick does work. Also, if, if you haven't noticed, by the way, you can now do stuff in the tavern and not have to wait for the cheesy animations. So, how many books does this guy take here? Four, eight, 12. 12 books in total. It's. it's on the upper end of modern legendaries, I would say. Yeah, most of them are somewhere between 10 and 12 for the newer ones. Um, but these books do give you a lot of points as well for Clan v Clan. So if you've got them and you're going to book him, great. You'll see something different on my free to play because I can't just straight book everybody I get and that type of stuff. So I, I have to decide who's going to take books. This guy, I think, will be worth booking. We'll go through all of his, his kit and stuff. And I kind of talk through why I think that. But in terms of three legendary champions through login rewards personally before i've play tested him i think he's the best one that's ever been including ninja and ronda and ultimate death knight i don't i guess it depends what you like doing though so ronda and ultimate death knight are arena specialists i don't think this guy's going to be an end game arena player but i think he's going to be a top tier pve champion which most people that play this game Play it because they prefer the PvE than PvP. So it depends what sort of person you are. Anyway, let's have a look here. Might as well buy masteries. We're going to change his masteries up throughout this video. Sort that out in a minute. So let's go through his skills then. Why do I think he's going to be so good? Everything he does is an AoE hit. Attacks all enemies. Yeah, that's huge for some content. It's also a watch out for some content as well. But in terms of most stuff that you do in this game, constantly hitting all the enemies is good. Yeah, it actually makes his, his build super versatile. Like, one of the most versatile champions I think we're ever going to get in this, in this uh, like playtest arena because you could be running him in stun set, provoke set. Uh, particularly provoke set could be good because he's an HP-based champion. Means he's going to be tanky. Yeah, so provoke set could be very good. Might just be running him in, in straight stat boosting sets to boost his HP, like Immortal. Might run him in perception just so that he's got uh, a high amount of accuracy and speed. Uh, there's tons of things we can do with this guy, which is cool. So what's going on? First one, books up to 45% chance to extend the duration of any burns on each target by a turn. That's a massive A1. <laughs> it's a massive A1. So yeah, it's just going to be extending burns. The A2, attacks all enemies before attacking. This is important because on Hydra, this will happen before he attacks therefore it's affinity friendly yeah before attacking instantly activates any burn on each enemy so it's just this pop of damage so you take hydra you got four hp burns out there at any time pop of damage that's going to be 12 percent four times three twelve yeah yeah twelve percent of their uh health just all of the head's health pops because not only do you do damage to the one that you're hitting, you do damage to the others as well. Now, the second part of this, I don't think is going to be affinity friendly in the same way the first part is. I think you actually physically hit to put the decrease attack out there. We'll check it as we play test him. But so that could be uh, you could get weak hits on this one. But still books up to 100% chance of putting decrease attack. Places like spider reduces the damage of the spiderlings. Places like ice golem, same thing. It's actually a crazy ice golem ability, this one. Uh, places like Hydra, decrease attack is super important. Um, Clan boss, decrease attack, super important. Like waves of enemies. There's so many places where this is such a good skill. So yeah, A2 really solid. 
A3 double hitter. First hit places a burn, so that gives the synergy for the rest of the kits. Um, first hit has uh, boots up to 100% chance of placing an AoE burn. Restores his max HP by 10% for each burn that he places. Okay, we'll get onto his passive in a minute. Heals him by 5% of his max HP for each burn he, he attempts to place that doesn't go out there. So it's either it's going out there and he's destroying his max HP. Or if it doesn't go out there for whatever reason, he's healing himself. This is interesting, honestly, because you could build him like, I, I don't know why you would, but you could build him without accuracy and just become like a hill bot with this. But I don't, I don't think it would make any sense to do it. Um, I can't think of a reason. Like, unless he hits really hard, you know, like Magnar hits hard, so you don't build him to do his actual kit. You just build him to nuke. I don't think this guy hits that hard. We will try it, though. Uh, Artak here, burning blood. So this is his passive. Whenever HP burn is activated, yeah, so activates it on his A2. Whatever HP burn is activated destroys his max HP by 5%, up to 50%. So he can straight lose half his health pool. He's an HP based champion. So I think even once he's done that, it comes down to a level. If you build him right, it comes down to a level where he's still solid. Like he's still going to be able to survive as well if not better than some of your hookah type champions but it is a bit of a watch out because you can set yourself up to fail with this when you've lost half your health you actually gain a ton of other stats okay so you increase his damage by 50 percent, so one percent for each percent he's lost it's a bit of a weird one with his kit so saf pointed this out in a video recently basically he's got a multiplier that scales off of his max hp so when he burns away his max hp he's actually burning away his capability of doing damage which is a bit sad but at the same point he's increasing his damage so it looks like they've built a mechanic here where it's like you lose it but you keep it you don't gain anything you don't lose anything you just kind of maintain damage but you do gain in crit damage, which will spike your damage up higher than if you were just 100% health. Uh, you also gain defense as well, which makes you tankier. Up to 50% more defense. So, you know, you could basically be running this dude at like 2,500 defense. If he goes to, you know, half, half um, burnt away max HP, then he's as tanky as like a normal tank in the game. Plus he's an HP based champion. I feel like there's some, some pretty cool synergy here with this passive. But it will take a bit of playtesting to see where's the optimal place to play him. Um, he, he also just straight up gains two resistance and speed for each percent of his max HP he loses. So in a place like Spider or Hydra, you know, more speed, more resistance is brilliant. So I don't know. The, the, the passive, I think, is super interesting. And there will be some big brain stuff that comes out of it. But initially, it just feels like you gain a bunch of stats when you're doing your kits. That's the thing to take away from it. You just gain stats as you're doing your kit. So I wasn't actually sure if he was going to um, be in the optimizer already or not, but he is. So it looks like the guys have already coded him in. Uh, what we're going to do here, if you're not familiar with the optimizer, this is a tool you can use on a Mac or PC. It's a free tool. You can get it from hellhades.com. Uh, it's called the Hellhades Artifact Optimizer. There's some cool stuff in here. I'll do a separate video on this. I've done loads of other videos on this that you could go and watch, by the way. But basically, I can build him for balance mode, which would be... Uh, just trying to like get some certain stats on his on his build like accuracy speed and health uh, we're going to try damage mode first and get him maximum damage just see what he can actually hit for or you can go survival mode and just keep him alive uh, and then we can go into different sets i could say you know use particular sets if i want to uh, i'm just going to configure this so that we include artifacts that people are already wearing irrelevant of whether they're locked or not I'm going to pretend that I've already done his mastery. So crit rate, crit damage, and steadfast will probably be the best ones here to get his stats up and Laura's steel. And then we're going to go into battle. General target is fine. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, I'm just going to tell it 170 speed and then give me maximum damage. And what it will do now is I'll look through my gear and it'd be like, right, this will be the optimal build. For how much damage you could do so you see here it's boosting hp it's boosting me to 100 crit rate and it's giving me high crit damage 
if I click over on skills here, this is if you're an uncommon member. Um, so it's like four ninety nine a month. You actually get a bunch of perks on the optimizer as well. So I can hover over any build and it will tell me how much damage that that attack should do against like a regular enemy. And I can just see like the difference when I look at these builds. So if I didn't want to steal from any of these champions, I could be like, well, let me check out some of the other builds. Anyway, we're going to build this out and test in maximum damage first before we show him in other areas of the game. Just going to call it out because it's I'm going to end up with a different build than what you just saw because I had this click to basically say anything that I've started to ascend, just you can take it to max. But I don't have the materials to do that. So we're actually, interestingly, we lose like 10,000 HP versus the build that I would do if I just had loads of the like Sand Devil farm done. So we're going to switch to this build here. Um, already wasted some of my silver. But generally, if you're going like maximum damage build, and we, I'm not saying this is the best build for him. I'm just want to test how much he can hit for. I don't think this is going to be the best build for him. But basically, you tend to have crit damage on your gloves. You tend to have um, whatever drives their damage on the chest, like HP percent for this guy, but others will be attack percent or defense percent. And then you tend to try and push that same stat again on the boots. Uh, and then you have like a crit damage amulet. So it's a good blend of crit damage, 100% crit rate, and then their main stat that does damage. Okay, the bandana's got to come out for this point. Maximum damage on our attack. Let's check this out. So we're going savage and cruel. That's just because those sets ignore defense, means we're going to hit harder. Uh, you wouldn't normally use cruel gear on an HP-based champion, but it still does ignore 5% of the enemy's defense so it's actually still solid to just hit harder with any style of champion we've got 100k health 250 percent crit damage 100 percent crit rates uh, and we've got helm smasher for the main mastery plus masteries that let me boost damage let's test this guy's damage out okay then so we're going with because he doesn't gain like increase attack or increase defense won't boost any of his damage there's no increase hp buff so what we're going with is Drop defense and weaken, damage boosters with these two, and then someone who increases our crit damage. Um, it's very hard, actually, to set up his passive to work in something like this. I think I would have to do it in Clan Boss or somewhere like that where you've got a bit more time to get stuff away. Like I think I'm going to nuke these waves too quick to even enable myself to do it. Like, well, him, don't kill everyone. Okay. So each hit is an AOE to start with the A1. This one would also extend burns for like a what 35% chance. 45, I think, when booked. This is what the animation is like as well. A1 is like 60k hit. That's pretty weak source, honestly. Okay, let's check the A2. So the A2 would also be activating burns if they were out there. So that gives a pump of damage anyway, normally, but let's see what it does on its own. A2. Oh, I like the animation. 150 odd K. Still, that's incredibly weak. That's not a hard hit. Might sound like it's a hard hit. I've got the best case scenario in some of my best gear. That's not a hard hit. Okay, then the A3. So this is the one that places the burn double hitter and would restore your max HP if you'd lost it already. Let's see what's going on here. Double hitter. What we got? So like 90K, 180K. Again, it's not terrible, but honestly, that's not a good hit. It's not good damage. So that's a. there's something else. I mean, we're going to gain more damage as he loses his max HP. Yeah, so that would ramp up a bit. But still, he's not going to be a crazy damage dealer. That's good. It gives us a direction. It means that we don't need to build him with our super nuke gear. You might still crit cap him, but ultimately, you need to make sure that he lands his burns. You need to make sure that he can ignite those burns and stay alive. He does damage in a different way than physically going in and pounding people like, you know, a Hefrak would do. So it's cool. We now understand that. Now we build, build him in a different way. So, yeah, I think for most people for general use, this is the type of mastery setup that you would use. Basically, taking Warmaster to do additional damage, um, making sure that you've got accuracy, making sure that you've got Laura's still for extra stats. And this is like a general PvE style build. You might use it for Clan Boss. You might use it for Dungeons. Uh, and when you're looking for gear, so let's remove the gear, you're going to be looking more at uh, just building his HP levels up and making him quite quick. So whereas I've gone nuke here with this original build, I think you actually just use things like perception gear, speed gear, 
accuracy gear as a generalist or and i think this would be a, a a really good way of building him if you've got it i would say stun set is going to be brilliant like really good on him 18 percent chance to stun just going to be fantastic because everything he does is an aoe hit so every time he hits he's got a chance to stun people or as i said earlier provoke set the reason why provoke might be better than stun here is because he's quite tanky generally yeah his, his build is going to be tanky and a provoke set is a 30 percent chance to land versus a stun set which is 18 percent chance to land yeah so you would just get more provokes away than you will stuns but stun is a better debuff because people are not hitting you at all there's definitely an argument to say and i'm going to do a separate hydra video there's definitely an argument to say that provoke set against hydra is potentially op like an extra chance to prov provoke that head of decay 30 percent chance every single time he does any of his skills i think that's going to be pretty damn solid so all i'm going to do here i'm just going to grab like literally some bits of perception that are lying around we're not going to go too crazy on the build and you'll see how quickly just with you know six star epic pieces i'll look for speed on the boots we can rotate quick go going to look for HP percent on the chest and the gloves ideally. This is quite nice now, the priority stats, and just be like, yeah, give me HP, and then give me a bit of speed. Yeah, already, just because it's so much perception gear, I've already done a cra uh, crush the accuracy I need for general PvE. So we can just select any of these pieces, doesn't really matter. HP with some speed on it. And you can see I've got like 220 speed, a lot of health, and good accuracy. And because we know he's not doing damage with his hits, we don't even need to worry about kind of pushing a load of damage there. We've got Warmaster here for some damage. Burns are going to be his damage. I am going to rank up these boots just to 16 though, so that we've got him going quicker. There's my silver. And yeah, look, 237 speed, generalist build. And this is the type of thing that I think will work nicely in Ice Golem, Spider, uh, you know, Waves of Doom Tower, that type of stuff. Okay, we're going to try a Spider 25 run here. I'm trying to keep the team fairly low key. I've, I don't have crazy builds anywhere here. We've got some stunnage. We've got some freeze. Probably don't even need the seal stunnage, honestly. Freeze, burn. In fact, take her out. Freeze, burn. Turn me to drop and some speed from my apothecary. That's, that's what we're going for here. Stage 25 Spider. In fact, apothecary is weak affinity, so this might be a, a fail, but we'll see. The first thing we want to do is put burns out on the enemies. Bam, there we go. Burns absolutely everywhere. Just turn me to drop armiga if you don't mind. Try not to weak hit my friend, making me look bad. Uh, we then put the freeze out from, but this could be any control by the way. It doesn't have to be Achak. Be any person who does a good level of control against enemies. The burns are going to be going, but then we get this instant activation of burn. Plus decrease attack means that whoever's spider tanking is going to take a load less damage. So watch the damage to the spider here when we do this instant activation. Pop! Half your health. Half your health's gone, friend. See you later. And that is where he is going to be absolutely deadly. He has, though, wrecked himself. So he's done his half. <laughs> he's done his half health loss, but he's gone down to one HP. Why did he do that? Why did he lose all his health? I don't think he was attacked, was he? Not, I'm not 100% sure why we just lost all of our health. I, I feel like that might be a bug. I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, if we get back to this A3, we can restore the HP that we lost and try and put burns out again. We might do too much damage, though. Let's see. No, burn goes back out there. We've restored the max HP. I think this has got to be a visual bug on his health. But if we heal now, yeah, it is. Look, you can't see what's going on with his health pool. So looks like a little bit of fixings required, please, Raid. But anyway, A1 can extend burns if they're out there. I've got no idea how much health this dude has got anymore. And if I was, if I actually had someone here that was dropping turn meter instead of Armaga, who's just in there for the rainy day, then... Right now, this would already be a dead spider. Like, it would already be dead. But because I'm having to deal with turn meter as well, we now got to wait for that to come back around again. So we're just going to A1. Get the freeze back out there, which gives me healing and turn meter stuff. Let's get the burns out there again. 
And you can see how this is going to work, yeah? I'm, I'm showing it slow, but I could easily make this like a minuscule time run with this dude. Activate the burns, pop of damage, and away you go. It's like, he is so good for Spider. On my free to play, he's going to be absolutely mincing it up. And he now joins that group of elite champions. We're talking the Sakias, the Teodors. Yeah, he's up there with the best at killing that spider. I'm actually just interested because on the optimizer, on Team Optimizer, I could tell it, find me a team. Now, the way Team Optimizer works is it finds teams based on what other people have already done. Yeah, based on champions that you own and what other people have already done whilst using the optimizer. So if I hit find a team now against stage 10 hard on Spider, and I say, please, I already see it here, but I can say, please in uh, include RTAC. Yeah, apply filter, and it'll throw the best ones up. So my account could run this team here because I own all these champions. That's what it's telling me. RTAC's already in comps that are running the hardest level of Spider in under 15 seconds. And I've actually seen, I don't own Sakia. I've seen someone do it already under 10 seconds because they own Sakia as well. And they are just igniting burns like crazy. Okay, we're going to have a go at Ice Golem here with, with a squad. Now, I just tried it actually before recording this. And it turns out he likes to do his A2 before his A3 against waves of enemies. I kind of get what he's thinking. Like, yeah, put decrease attack out there. But no. We want the burns out there so you can then ignite the burns before you do your decrease attack, you fool. So make sure you're, you're turning his AI to go A, A3 into A2. Yeah, otherwise he does his AI a bit wonky. Uh, otherwise, everyone should be good here. So all I'm thinking with this comp, and I'm running stage 25 on Ice Golem, so pretty high level. Yeah, I could bring in something like a Seer wave clear and it'd be much quicker to get through the waves, but... I kind of want to show his power here. So what we're doing here is just burning the waves to death. Yeah, whilst using Seal's stun to try and control the waves. Phoenix is basically in here as a boss killer or the, the ad killer for the boss. So I've turned off Phoenix's other abilities other than his A1 for the boss. And old Tanky Boy here is just in to do the burn damage. We've got Apothecary keeping us quick. And seals in there for the revive if we need it. Not too bad on the waves. Obviously, if you've got a poison explode or a seal type of, uh, or a seer doing wave stuff, then that's way better. But actually, burns is a really good way. If you're trying to get to higher level stuff, burns is a really good way to kill waves. See the way every time one of them takes a turn, it's ticking down and it's ticking health on all of them. So you get a really like balanced kill of the enemy wave increased defense is being a bit cheeky here do like his animations very cool seals keeping us alive apothecary is keeping us alive they are going for my phoenix because he's the wrong affinity for this fight but he's still even as wrong affinity he's so damn good against the the side ads he is looking like he might take a dive though but there you go that aoe hit comes in again and then we're on to the boss. So get the burns out everywhere. We're after decreased defense so we can kill these side ads a bit quicker. And then Phoenix's A1 will block revive, which is the, the glory of Phoenix. Does a lot of damage if he doesn't weak hit. Even with both side ads up, we are taking a knock. Like the, the Ice Golem hits hard, but that decreased attack from our attack here is so valuable against the Ice Golem. Would like it if Phoenix can kill one of these side ads though. Oh, we haven't got decreased defense on them yet. Fe Tayro, are you doing decreased defense or not? Just keeps getting resisted. I've obviously got him with no gear on. It's my bad. He's probably not geared. <laughs> oh, go on, Phoenix. Okay, block revives out. Once one block revive is out, I shouldn't die. Like, we should be tanky enough now just to deal with it. And that is going to be home run. If my. <laughs> If my Tayrell had gear on, then it would have been a bit quicker. But still, you can see the power. Like, we've got no damage really coming in from anyone else other than the burns. And on stage 25, we're still going to do it in just over three minutes. 
which is pretty nuts. Yeah. And he will be, for hard ice golem, one of the best champions in the game. Yeah, he's up there with all the people that are doing it quick right now, like Cronum, uh, Ninja. Like they're the champions who are doing Ice Golem fast because of the ability to ignite burns. And there you go, slamming Ice Golem into the ground. Stage 25 with really a pretty free to play team and not geared like crazy. So I said it earlier, but another way we could build this guy is in a stun set. And I think it's going to be really good. All I'm doing here is just setting my priority to high speed. Yeah. And I guess you want some accuracy in your build as well. I'm going to get mine naturally through, through any gear. But I don't mind really what I pick up. HP or defense would be good um, for like general stats. But we're just going high speed onto his build. I'll keep whatever two pieces of perception I've got left. Take this helm here. I don't have crazy good stun gear left lying around. But there you go. Whipped it into a stun set build. Still high health. Good defense. Good speed, good accuracy. Uh, and what you can do if you're going stun set is you could run him with fearsome presence, which will give you a higher percent chance to land that stun. Um, because Warmaster really, I mean, his damage is going to come through burns. Warmaster will do a bit of an additional damage as well. But if you're really struggling with like high levels of Doom Tower, then throwing fearsome presence on will give you just a better chance to lock out your enemies. It depends if you're bringing anyone else. In fact, I'll do it. It depends if you're bringing anyone else to help you control waves. And if you're not bringing like a crazy comp that's going to do damage, then it's all about wave control when you get to those higher levels. So burning some of my resources here for you fellas. Let's do this. And I guess we just go this. So we won't go any offense tree at all now. Kill when somebody's dead yes please or still chance to get our abilities back is quite cool i could even do this actually like protect someone else not bad if someone dies do this um as things wear off gain faster turn meters pretty cool as well on him because he's obviously doing a lot of um debuffs so something a bit more like this suddenly becomes like a, a lockout champ so let's just pick out a high level Doom Tower somewhere. Let's call it Hard 87. And we're just going to throw a squad in. So we can bring our Seal in, who's got some stunning. She's just going to support him with the control. Bowed off as well for some protection. Albeit, like, I don't, I don't know. We might not get through it, but it'll give you a feel for what's going on anyway. So we're bringing the Artac for his stun set. And then one more. Um, maybe we just go with someone like maybe someone like a rector, just someone else who's just going to give us support. I think. I'm sure, she's built. Let me have a look. Ah, uh, not far off being built. Okay. Make sure she's got some sort of defensive stuff going on. Because this is high level. Like, you wouldn't be coming here naked. Crit damage. Anything but crit damage. That'll do. Okay. So, again, the main, main thing I'm trying to show here is him in a stun set. What could it do? He's got basically a 1 in 5. No, 1 in 4 chance of stunning every single time he hits. Yeah, so every time he hits, one of these enemies should... It doesn't matter if he A1s, A2s, doesn't matter. None of that. He should land stuns. And that's what Fears and Presence is doing. It's helping us do that. Obviously, Seal's in there doing the same job as well. And as long as he doesn't get locked out all the time, like he is right now, then he'll get his burns away as well. And his burns will be what actually do the damage to the waves. So I've got no other damage dealer in here right now. Nobody's built to do damage at all. He does like A2 in instead of A3 in, though, if you do not set up the AI. I think that's a real mistake from the way Raid have programmed him. In fact, I'm going to switch it. So we're going to go with the same team. I'm just going to make sure he's using this A A3 into A2. Like so crazy, they've not programmed it this way. Raid, if you watch this video, please change this. This absolutely should be changed. So here we go. 
Burns out. And stun. So the second hit is the stun. And you can see now we've locked out four of the enemies between him and Seal. Every time he hits, he's got another chance to stun someone in the wave. Or a good chance to stun someone in the wave. Obviously, he does lock out his own abilities and stuff. Doesn't matter. We'll get that back when we do his A3 next. But for people that are struggling to get through high-level content, burns are really good ways of doing damage. Look how quickly we now annihilate that wave because the burns are out there. And uh, doing having somebody doing control like this whilst doing their damage as well, it's just so good. Yeah, it's just... It's the way to do it if you don't have like the OP teams going on. And you can see we kind of breeze. Now that we've got the AI set up right and stuff, breeze through that wave. If you were trying to do this and it's like you're super struggling to do it personally, you could literally take, um, you know, you would, you would come off of auto at this point and just manual A1s, A1s, A1s. So that you've got all of your big abilities back for wave two. And then basically we're going to pop wave two in the same way nothing's changing obviously i've got bode is healing me up here he's destroying half his health doesn't matter he's still a beast as long as you've got someone to heal him up after and really you know we've annihilated quite a hard wave there like we're high up in doom tower at this point and yeah we're kind of like slamming people down got a couple of revivers just in case we've got Healing going on throughout the team. Burns, stuns, it's all good. Seal's looking in a bit of danger. We do have a Rector to pick her up if we need it. Plus, the two of them are kind of healing each other. She's having a bit of a dive. Hopefully, we stun up some of this way. Give us time to get back into the fight. Definitely putting things like counter-attack accessories on someone like him as well would be good. He is going to go down though, is he? Is he? He might do. Still, will pick him back up. This is the type of stuff you've got to do if you're fighting high level waves. You just have to have contingencies in your team to be able to deal with it. Nice counter attack there. Gives us another stun. So, yeah, that's the value of, of if you've got stuff like stun sets going on, then counter attack accessories, counter attack masteries are both really good. Just enables you to get more hits away. Even bringing in. Someone like an ally attack champion gives you more chances to do a hit. Every time you hit, you've got a chance to stun. But although it's not clean, it's, you're not looking at this thinking, oh, this is the safest thing in the world. Well, we're fighting very high level stuff with honestly zero damage in this team. There's zero. Yeah. Literally just his burns and um, control. That's the only way we're getting through this stuff. So look, there you go. I'm going to do a separate video on hydra potentially clan boss as well let me know if you want to see it and also let me know down below do you want to see him against like the highest level hard content like spider ice golem that type of stuff with op teams not with this kind of like trying to keep it friendly do you want to see him with some of the best teams that could fight i've been hell hades this is our attack i'll see you later